guys, I think today is going to be uh, it's a good day to start talking about the base curve, which is the last bit of of Iowa that I think we didn't cover it yet, and it's quite essential. So I'm going to try to explain what is the base curve, how it's measured approximately, and how you can make it yourself, and in fusion, how you can make something similar to a base to a proper base curve, because I tried good few hours today to figure out how to do the proper base curve but I couldn't do it properly but I got very close to something what looks like a proper base curve so I'm gonna show you two methods how to do it and I'm gonna show you uh, like a how how you can do it home and how you can bend your frames approximately in a right base curve so uh, for some people who already have some machines like from Italy or from China, you probably recognize this thing, which is normally the, the basically the mold for a base curve. You always just press the frame against this and it's gonna give you the nice curve. And let's take a look how to do it uh, properly, like how to do it on frame. So I can, uh, I can show you how, how, to do, how to bend it and show you how it works. Uh, Maybe let's let's start with a few like a with a little bit theoretical thing. I just create myself this like a little base that I know that which radius is which base curve. So because uh, I saw it on on a chat and I saw it like a, there was a little discussion what the basically base curve means. So I took this measurement uh, from from lenses and basically uh, for each base the higher the base the bigger the curve, which I think everybody understands. So everybody who works with the lenses knows that most common base curve on a, uh, the, the curve on the lenses is base four. It means the radius of the, of the lens is 132 millimeters and diameter is basically double that. And the lower the base that we need to basically make the frame flatter. But of course, if we are talking about the, it's, it's very theoretical because if you think about it, you have a cylindric lens and if you have a two cylindric lenses, you cannot make suddenly another base curve out of two cylindric lenses. So it's very theoretical. So it, the base curve of the whole frame, it just means that you have a two cylindric lenses and then you make like a hard angle between them and basically bend the whole frame in the middle and that's going to give you the base curve. But you're always following on your left and right side, you're following the lens curve. So I'm going to try to show you here. So I have here, like I showed you before, like a, how to make a quick sketch, like a left side of your frame. So we're going to do something similar. So I have here one sketch of the, of the frame and I'm going to finish it. And then uh, here, the quite good method, how to, how to see how the base curve looks like, it's going to sheet metal. Here on the top, you can see the sheet metal. And here in create, you roll it down and you convert your shape into the metal, metal sheet. You're just gonna click on that surface and it's gonna automatically give you the thickness of the frame. And now we can play, we can start bending this thing. But I realized the fusion doesn't allow me to do send, uh, two bends in the same time. So I can just make basically the curve, which is horizontal. I cannot make the, the cylindric of the lenses, but it can still show you a little bit how this can look like. So I'm gonna create here the sketch on the top of the frame. And I'm gonna make a little line here really close to the center of the frame, just vertical line here. And in this point, I can finish the sketch and I can go to, again, to create and go to the functions called bend. And now it's basically asking me what I wanna bend. So I'm gonna click on this small bit. So now it's telling me that this part, this little part is stationary. So that one is gonna still be straight and uh, without bend. And from that point to the le to, to left is gonna be bent. And I can here create the overrule, override 
override rules and change the band to the radius of the of the lenses which if you look here so for the base four lenses the radius is 132 millimeter so i'm gonna so i have to do it again so i'm gonna go band click on this small bit here uh, i'm gonna click here override and bend override and press 132 And it's basically give me this curve. You can see like now it has the basically it has the vertical curve of the lens. It doesn't have the horizontal. You can see this is still flat, but it has at least this band. And if I do this, if I go to back to the solid and mirror the whole thing just with this straight, I'm gonna select this body. This and this is gonna be my mirror plane. So now I basically have the frame which has the base curve on a, on a lenses 4 and overall it's also base curve 4. So that's basically how you made the base curve 4. But if you want to wanna this frame and you don't want a base 4 because you can see that it's quite big curve and it might not fit actually this frame, the best way is delete the, this mirror and create yourself here a little like a helping sketch and uh, extrusion so I'm gonna here open the origin and find uh, pla this plane X and Y uh, uh, X and, and Z sorry create a sketch and make myself here a little uh, project this line and create here basically a little cut in let's say five degree angle no let's say 10 degree angle and extrude that this I'm gonna cut that thing I'm gonna cut it out and now it, it's not gonna uh, be base four let me show you now if you press the mirror now select the object and select this plane it's now almost straight and basically like it looks weird because it doesn't have the bridge bump but you can see that now if I look from this view it's almost you have just a base curve on the lenses but overall the frame is almost straight and if you want to check how uh, what is the what is the radius overall we can create an, again a sketch on this on this plane and I'm gonna create here a little circle which can show us where we have if I press this and this and uh, put here the this consistent consistent uh, thing and here too with this little point and if I look back that if I want a base two curve for the whole frame it means I need diameter of the circle needs to be 530 and if it's and it's supposed to match this curve so I'm gonna create dimension and put 530 and you can see it's not perfectly matching the frame but you can see it's very close if you imagine here you will have a bridge bump so it will be much narrower and it will be much closer to actually base to curve so that's a, that's like one way how you can how you can do the approximate the base curve, and so if you want to see if you make some design and you want to see and you want to decide which base curve you want, that's kind of easy way to do it. And if you want to change this to be even flatter, you can just go back to your original sketch here for the for that little angle. That's the wrong one. This one, and you can that was uh, ten degrees. And I think if I change it to, let's say, 7.5, that now 7.5, what I tried, is supposed to be almost, almost perfect base, base 2 curve on the frame. I'm just going to hide this.
So you can see like a, now it has this curvature and I didn't figure out the good way how to also model here the bridge bump, but I'm gonna try to figure out it later and then just share a short video. But you can see that now it's just like, you can see that the, all the edges are actually curved inside. So it means that the, the frame is actually bent. It's not just extrude in a, in a curve, but it's bent in a curve. So it will give you, if you, if you play with a base four curve, you can see that there's a massive difference when you have the flat frame and when you bend it, the frame is suddenly much smaller. It looks a bit different. All the, all the shape, uh, shapes is looking slightly different. So it's quite good to, to try before, be, uh, before you start bending the frame. So, so this is, this is kind of easy way how to do it. And it's not very problematic, but I can also show you the other way how to do it. And it's a bit more complex because we need to basically create ourselves uh, almost, yeah, it's a weird shape, but uh, it's basically two base for, uh, base for lenses here and here. And I'm just gonna extrude the frame against it and I'm gonna show you how it looks. So, um, originally it's a, it's a bit long process because you need to first create yourself a, little uh, 100 by 100 millimeter square then extrude it and then create um, the base curve on the top of the base for, uh, base for lenses and eventually it's gonna give you this kind of shape I'm not gonna go because it's quite a lot of steps and it's a it's a bit annoying process but I'm gonna share with you this file and you can take a look how this was done but in general, if you want to try it, you can just have this file uh, in this stage saved and then you can just extrude any frames afterwards. So I'm going to create a sketch here on this orange, orange plane. And I'm going to put a uh, design of my frame. So I'm going to take a look here and take this original sketch. I'm going to select it all copy it and I can insert it here. I'm just gonna rotate it by 180 degrees and I'm gonna put it just now approximately in the center and now I can mirror the design left and right like this, the center line and now this is quite quite nice because you can always have this this base insert your sketch of the frame and all you need to do is here in a solid click on extrude select your frame and pull it against that basically that template of the of the lenses and you're not gonna cut but you're gonna use the function uh, intersect and that's gonna give you the frame with the base curve with a both cylindric and like a, a cylindric on the lenses and a curve overall. This looks a bit weird because I don't have it in the center, but I can select it all and move it a little bit towards the center. And you have the frame in a base curve. There's a, there's a way how you can, if you, I think this one I designed with the base two, but if you go into a sketch again, I think it was here. Here I select the 10 degrees, 10 degrees basically bend between those two lenses, but I can do, let's say 15 degrees here, and you can see the frame is even more bended now. So you can play with these, with these angles and I'm gonna move this again to the center. And it's more bent. And I think if I go maximum up to 22 degrees here in this angle, it's giving me basically almost, you can see that it's almost perfect, uh, perfect radius. So it means I'm getting very, very close to base four because it's matching the cylindric curve on a, on a lenses. 
So this is quite quite like a easy like if you have this original. If I go back and hide all this, if you have this thing, you can always play with the with the different bass curves. I wouldn't recommend you to use it uh, like a, to do some modeling on this on this frame when you have all this done, because it's getting quite complex to make recess for the hinges. But it's quite good if you, for example, if you have a design for your frame and you have a 3D printer and you want to see how the frame will looks like will look like. It's quite good because you can because if you have a 3D print, it's kind of hard to bend it and play with that shape. So you can 3D print it already. With this base curve and try how the frame fits and if it's maybe too small, too big, and play with that. Uh, it's also quite good because here I have and I create like a several um, base curve uh, versions. So for example, this is one frame with the base two curve. So, but I will definitely recommend you if you do the if you do the three D printing. Use the method with uh, just bending it as a sheet metal because it's gonna get you closer to the right shape. Because if you use this method, like I show you, you can see if you look at the front, it's actually the frame is not bended. It's just the same shape but just extruded against the base, uh, like a curved surface. So it doesn't actually change the shape as normally as uh, when when you were when you uh, do the when you actually bending and heating up the frame so i would definitely recommend you to do it this way and for uh, bending frames uh, it's best to have these kind of molds and i'm going to share with you the file so you can 3d print it this whole thing and the easiest way what we tried now in our studio was if you want to do the base curve, always do the bridge bump first. So bridge bump your frame, and if you heat up the frame again, just be careful not to heat up the center much, and then you can just heat up the left and the right side and bend it against this. Just have a just with a heat gun or something, you can just make the frame quite soft and bend it against this, and it's going to give you quite. You can get quite close to the right base curve. There is a Bit tricky part because if you don't have any support for your lenses there's always big big chance that you're gonna completely mess up your shape because you, you're gonna heat up the frame too much and when you try to push it against the mold it's gonna it's gonna basically uh, destroy the shape so the best way if you have a thin thin frame let's say the frame around three millimeters or even less always just Put the lenses first in the frame and then bend and do the base curve with the lenses in because it's going to hold your shape and, and there's a less chance that you're going to mess up messed up the whole uh, whole frame and so this is kind of like a, the best way how to do it what i figure out uh, if you want to do the base curve on a frame without the bridge bump you need to create this uh, mold in a one piece and it needs to have and it needs to have basically a slightly different uh, vertical curve because it cannot be base four because it, there there will be like a basically flat area and it wouldn't look good. So you will need to reduce a little bit your uh, horizontal curve for your lenses. But I don't think it's a big problem because it's just going to change the shape afterwards based on your lenses. And yeah, I think. Uh, is there any questions? So I would this um, I wanted to figure out how to do this. Not mostly because I want to use it every time, but it's just like literally if I wanna if I make a frame for somebody and I want to show him the visualization how the frame looks like. It looks much better when it's when it has at least some base curve and you can just add quickly some sides because if you have it like this you can create a sketch on this side and you can create some arms here and it will look much closer to your frame actually afterwards
it's not it's not perfect, but it can help you to to play with this. And also, if you if you want to play with uh, if you don't know which kind of pantoscopic tilt you want, you can always see here like you can you can try different angles and see how it fits with the frame. Thing like this and you can just mirror it on the other side you can add a little, a little hinges if you already have some 3d model of hinges you can just add them here and make something much closer to a, to a real play a real fray, frame and if I open yeah sorry you can you hear me Mate? yeah sure yeah. Um, so I was just wondering when you when you've got because you've got a vertical base curve on that there, um, does that affect the existing panoscopic tilt of the hinge that you're fitting with? Uh, you can see here it will affect it a little bit. You can it will add a little bit of angle here if you if you do the base curve. So I would guess based on the size of the frame, I think it will add two three degrees to the original tilt of the hinge. So if you if you put a hinge. And you have the you put it on a flat frame, it will automatically give mm -hmm. you about three degrees tilt. Okay. So if you've got a if you've got a hinge that comes with say say seven or eight degrees, then you'll end up with more like ten, eleven degrees. Yeah. But okay. it also depends like a, you can when you do the base curve and you do it with the with the hands and you press it just against the mold, you can just mm -hmm. uh, you can play with that a little bit and you can put a lot of pressure, let's say, on a center and do not press that much on the locks. So if you don't want the lux to be completely rounded, you can just press like, let's say, to the uh, middle of the frame to have the lenses in a perfect shape and the center in a perfect shape and left the end of the uh, frame a little bit flatter. Okay. So this is, this is what we tried and it was working quite well. And there's also a big thing that when you do the base curve and bigger base curve you do, then you had a, the nose pads will get closer together. So if you already put like a nice 60 degrees angle when, it, uh, when the frame is flat and you do the base four, the, uh, the nose pads will get much, much closer and you you want to send them a little bit to open up a bit more. Cool. you can you can uh, like uh, this is the this is the numbers for if you if you want to play with this it's uh, the all the radiuses and diameters are very accurate now compared to the like uh, how it's supposed to be the whole frame uh, these degrees are quite approximate so you can you can play with like uh, which degrees it should it should have but it's always good when you do the frame always just make yourself that little uh, okay, I'm gonna open this one this little circle and double check if you put the diameter of the base curve that you want and you can see how it's matching the frame so if you need to make it maybe a bit more curve or a bit less that can give you a little bit like an overview if this is correct or not so uh, th let's say 352 here this whole circle it's supposed to be base 3 curve and here on this frame I did on the band here I did like a 16 degrees basically between the lenses to match that uh, that curve but yeah like if you if you look at uh, some like if you find some pictures of the of the drawings maybe from China or from some mass manufacturers they always put base curve on the whole frame but I'm pretty sure that this base curve it's Base, uh, it's always uh, uh, relying on, on the factories, which kind of molds they have and which angle they put. So you cannot really actually measure it. So this is, this is kind of virtual thing. But if you follow these diameters and these circles, it can get you quite close to, to that. And I think the most important thing is anyway to have the base curve on a, like I have the cylindric base curve on the lenses. Because if you, if you put that cylindric curve there, it means that it's not going to change the shape of your frame. So when you do the splay of the arms and when you do the rest of the frame, you put the lenses and you don't need to do any adjustments afterwards. 
or maybe a little bit, but it's not gonna end up as you made a flat frame. Without the base curve, you put the lenses in and suddenly the arms are completely closed. But guys, if there's, uh, this is what I kind of figure out or what is like a, my approach. If there is, if you guys has, has any, exp any other experience with this or if there's anything, anything else that I miss maybe. So, sorry, Matthew, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I'm, I wanted to know, um, because I'm, I'm not from the eyewear industry, I'm a designer, so I'm learning a lot of stuff here. And um, I, I, I had understood that um, the lens base is, is spherical, and I, I see that you here, you're using a cylinder. Yes. Um, uh, but I've seen I've seen some cutouts uh, from some in, uh, some Instagram posts that you that you posted. I see some in, images where the where the the molds are it's a sphere, not 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 cylindrical. Uh, is that true? Well, it was that was that was like the one I was playing with because I had to, because I need to make few frames which which doesn't have the bridge bump. So I was trying to figure out how to just make uh, the curve on the whole frame and uh, to be like a smooth curve. And I figure out that it's basically impossible. So I was following on a base curve. I was following different diameter than on a, like a, on a horizontal. I was following different uh, radius than on a horizontal. So it was like, like a little hybrid between between base curves. So if you so basically like if you have a base curve and you want to have it absolutely properly, it needs to be two spherical lenses bended. In a, in a in a different angle. If you want to have a just just big big radius, it needs to be then there needs to be some little cheats how to look very similar but not exactly the same. Okay, so you could have you could have two spheres, uh, two base spheres for the for the lenses, and then cut out the middle and 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 make some continue some continuous uh, surface to to join them both or something like that. Exactly. Like I have Not sure if I'm explain explain. Correct because I did it that I have two like a half cylindrical, uh, uh, half, half spherical basically balls, and then I connect them with a flat area basically. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to show you. Correct. Well, I understand. Because maybe I can I can show you that in a because I did it in a different software. But let's see I can if I can show you. Uh, I, I I tried some of that in Rhino. That's why um, it's a bit different, but it, it, the 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 concept is the same. So that was the, the mold I yep. made. This is uh, what we were talking. It's basically like a hybrid between uh, uh, for the for the base curve, where you can also make the flat the the base curve without the bridge bump. So it's a so they have a different radius and they are all connected with like a flat area based on a curve. So that one was for base two. This one on a on a left top, and this this one was for a base six. So it has like a different width, which just fits perfectly. In that, but I found out that this is going to be a bit tricky because it's quite important to have that adjustable uh, gap between the left and right, so you can perfectly match it with your with your uh, bridge bump. Because if you put it all the way to the top of the mold, it's going to bend way more on a on the top edge of your frame, and it's going to look really, really weird. So you need to be trying to focus to have your frame in the center of the mold always. Sammy? Uh, you, you are on mute, sorry. 
Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just a quick question. Do you want to match the base curve of the lens with the base curve of the uh, uh, of the frame? Not really. So if you have like a if you have a six uh, base curve six for a, a lens, do you want like a, a six for for the frame? Uh, not really, because well, if you, if you do if you use a base six lenses, I would definitely recommend you to use it maybe just for very uh, like a with a frame that it has circle lenses because otherwise it's going to look a little bit weird and you always need mm -hmm. to like you always need to have the base curve uh, like a uh, spherical for for the basics but then i wouldn't recommend you to do all the way the basics because it's going to be crazy bent but of course if it's like a, for a sports glasses or something it will look good but otherwise i will try to well i know that most of the people are still using uh, base 4 or base 4.5 four, uh, 4 so and I, and I know that you can get basically any lenses in that in that curve and of course there is a lenses with a with a zero curve and then you can do whatever you want with that so that's that's very easy and then of course if you have a base zero lens I wouldn't recommend you to touch any any base curve maybe just bend it in, in the middle a little bit but, on the nose yes but of course it, uh, it looks weird because if you have a zero like a uh, if you look at a frame which had a zero base lenses, they are completely flat. So if you bend the frame yeah. in the middle, it looks kind of weird. So if you have a zero flat lenses, it needs to be completely flat frame. Otherwise, it's going to reflect on the sides. And yeah, it's going to be like a triangle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but if you use like um, uh, a round shape uh, lens with a base six, you, you do, do you need to have the same base on the on the frame, or you don't need anything. If the if the, the lens is is like a circle. Uh, if, the, if, if the lens is, is just a circle, if your frame is basically just a rounded frame, I wouldn't worry mm -hmm. about that because it's gonna fit anyway. If it's round, it's gonna yeah. fit. But the, yeah. there's always problem when you try to have some like a flat uh, flat shape of the, of yeah. the lens. It's not gonna fit and it's gonna kind of pop out. Or then yeah. it's up to person who's great, uh, who's going to cut the lenses. So he needs to modify the shape a little bit before he tracing the frame. Otherwise, it's always going to end up with a little bit of gap in a, in a flat area. Yeah. So we lenses. all have the same issue with like the flat top of, of the frame. Um, if you have a line on the top of the frame, you, you need to follow the base curve. If you don't do that, you're going to have, as you said, like a, a, a bump of the lens that you're going to, to see. Yeah. Scenario: If you if you do this, it sometimes look good, but it doesn't really hold the lens. And if you put it mm -hmm. on, the frame is gonna change the shape a little bit, and the frame uh, and the lens will pop out. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Matej. Thank no you. Uh, Chris. Uh... Yeah, I was just I was just commenting about the the base curve of the the lenses with the frame. Um, and just wondering, because uh, obviously when you order your lenses, um, if you're ordering them yourself as a maker, you can order the lenses to be cut on the uh, the curve that you want for the frame or for the lens section of the frame. But uh, if, is anyone else supplying to to other stores and things like that? Are they specifying what base curve they should have the lenses made to to fit in? Um, does that does that make sense? Like. So if I'm ordering for for a Lindbergh frame, for argument's sake, I always order my Lindbergh lenses to be cut on a on a three or four base curve, um, because that's the way they fit into the frame. Same with some of the Tao um, metals and things like that, um, because most stores, for argument's sake, don't necessarily have the knowledge or the capacity to to adjust the the trim pieces on their frames and to to correct the splay of the temples and things. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess I'm just wondering whether other people are supplying to stores and whether they're specifying that so much. Mm. And Sammy, Sammy might understand, particularly with Buffalo yeah, one frames, for I can say. I think it's done the opposite way. It's when you get the lens, if you order, when you order like a minus two or minus four lens, after that you're going to cut the lens. And the, the, the when you do that with the machine, the way the machine is going to do it is going to follow the rim of your frame. Mm. It's done exactly mm. the opposite way. Yeah, yeah. You know I, except I mean? that I 
this is why it, it won't be in the middle of your lens. When you look on the mm. side of your lens, it won't be on the middle. It's going to move to follow mm. the curvature of your frame. When you have like a 3D scan of your of your frame before putting the lens inside. You, you know what I mean? So if you, if you order a minus two, which is going to be a, a, a base four, or minus eight, which is going to be a base one, at the end, the machine is going to put the... Uh, the, I don't know how you call that, but like the the the, 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 the like the bevel exactly all around, but the, uh, at the right position to to match the frame, the base curve of the frame. But what Matej was saying is true. If you have like um, a base curve on the frame with a flat lens, it could fit technically, but at the end you're going to have like a, to mirror like that. So. Um, this it's a real great question. Definitely, we have to think about uh, matching both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had an incident recently with a buffalo horn frame that I had made for myself um, because I curve generally to the lenses. Um, so, look, I've been fitting for 20 years, so I, I would often, um, I know how I was going to curve it and cut it and where I was going to put the bevel, but I sent it to the laboratory because it had a, a super slippery coating on it. Um, which wouldn't cut on my machine. And um, and so they just, they ordered it based on the script curve, um, you know, best kind of result. Um, and then they, they heated it and just tried to jam it into the buffalo horn frame when they clearly didn't heat it enough or, or consider it at all. So, of course, it, no way. it cracked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for you. <laughs> That's right. Thankfully, it was my frame, so it wasn't a big drama. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I was just thinking about this in terms of when we're sending them to laboratories or ordering lenses and things like that, that, you know, um, how much specification, you know, particularly if we're going to outsource to, to more retail-focused stores or, or whatever else you know, we need to consider in this, so. Yeah, that's true. And by the way, uh, Chris, how are you sounding up? Because I guess like with a horn frame, you don't have much option to do basically a base curve because you need to heat up the horn like crazy and push it with a lot of force and keep it actually climbed for a certain amount of time. So you kind of relying on a good optician to sort out the lenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I do it by I, myself. My horn frame, it's, I put the lens by myself. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the conclusion I've come to as well, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> Saves everyone some problems, especially if you get, you know, kind of tricky with your, your shape and things like that. Um, uh, it's probably better if they just send it to me, so. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah, to be honest, because I did some, uh, I did quite a lot of glazing, but I never, uh, it was a quite probably smart machines because I didn't have much options and it was always looking good, even when I was doing prescription. So I'm actually not sure even if, if, if it was some like a crazy lenses and it was basically sticking, uh, I can always choose if I want the lens sticking out on a, a, of the frame or inside and I can choose like a, if it's supposed to follow the lens or I can give it like a automatically just a set up a base, base four curve. So that was, that was quite, quite easy, but I'm not sure how it works on a, on not like a top, top, top machines. So if I, I think, tricky. Yeah, I think I think that I think the drama is that the um, the labs have so many jobs coming through that for them to sit and um, and kind of inspect each frame yeah. and say, oh, okay, well the best result for this is for me to cut it to the base curve and fit it in, or the best result is to cut to the curve of the lens or whatever else. I don't think that they have the uh, the time and 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 kind of space and manpower to kind of do that for every frame. Yeah. Um, so certainly I know when I, because I work a little bit in a retail store um, and look, you know, because I'm into frames, I'll, I'll look at a frame and then I'll put some some suggestions in and have it um, noted to be special fit um, if I want something to be done in a particular way, you know. Yeah. And like a, a, for me, the, the most important thing when I was doing, like a, when I was trying to think about a lot about the base curve, was most of the problem with the lenses. So uh, I like like when I did some bespoke frame for somebody, I never had a opportunity to actually uh, make the lenses myself. So I always send it somewhere, and that was almost the end of the frame. So I gave it to somebody, and they took it to the optician, and they put the lenses in. But I, on the beginning, I made absolutely sure that the frame was perfectly fitting for the customer. They put the lenses, and it suddenly won't fit, and it was suddenly too tight, and it was 
it just wasn't right. So that's why I was starting thinking about this cannot happen again because it's just badly reflecting on me and my frame because it was okay in a box and suddenly it's absolutely horrible. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's an interesting interesting challenge with bespoke stuff and and I, like I said, I, that's why I do a little bit more like what Sammy um, does is I I tend to say okay well. I'll, I'll order the lens for you and um, and order it to the right fit for the frame, so it doesn't uh, affect what I've what I've worked on for you. Yeah, the shape of the frame. Mm. No, for sure. Uh, so, guys, like if you if you want, I'm going to share this uh, this this shape with you on uh, on our WhatsApp group. So, if you have any chance to uh, have access to some three D print or something, I'm going to share the files so you can three D print them. And you can try them on and see like uh, what was uh, what's your what's your experience or how it works for you or if this is this is kind of okay because I'm working on a system where this is not going to be 3D printed but it's going to be you know out of solid material and you're going to have actually holes for so you can cut yourself on CNC the negative of your lenses or basically the exact shape of your lenses you can adjust perfectly the size and it will perfectly follow your frame so if you do like a batches of 10, 15 frames, you can just set it up once and heat up the whole frame without being absolutely scared that if I press it here a little bit too much, I'm gonna mess up the groove. If I press it here, so it's just gonna kind of nicely follow that. But it's a it's a bit still process, but I know like this shape is working quite well and you can still do it do it quite quite good, but it needs to be a thick frame. If it's thin, I'm still scared to to try it. Yeah. But of course, the lucky optician mm. with the cutting, uh, like a lenses cutting machine, is much easier. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely great. Perfect. So uh, I hope that was uh, that was quite clear. Like, uh, uh, if you have any any questions, don't worry. Drop me a message. I can I can explain it further, or uh, I can show you like a. Properly uh, again, how to do this this base curve, but at least maybe this will help to somebody to to play with the with the final design and to show your customer that how the frame will, looks like. And even if you if you in Fusion just download some scan of somebody's head, it's gonna look much better when you put this actually on a on a, on somebody's scan and you can see like how it's followed the the, the head. And if it's maybe on in two D, it was looking like a perfect size. Suddenly, you, you do the base curve uh, three, and the frame is too small. So th that will be just just interesting for some people to see, like uh, to get a bit more service to your customers and get closer to a real frame. So there will be no surprises. Perfect. Any any questions? Uh, no, but Madej, thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, first time I tell you that, that thank you, thank you very much. It's amazing. Seriously, and it's a, it's a great way to meet amazing people. Yeah, that's, that's the best part. <laughs> the massive WhatsApp group of, uh, of uh, eyewear knowledge. Yeah, I, I, I'm impressed. In a few weeks now, I don't, I don't even know how many we are, but it's, it's, it's definitely great. <laughs> I love that. And guys, if you have any, any ideas, what, you, uh, what would you like to, uh, what I should cover next time? Mm -hmm. uh, if there's anything still what wasn't covered or still some questions about anything, I'm happy to take a look on that issue and make a 3D model of that problem. Thank you, thank you. Perfect. If there is no more question, guys, that was a short lesson, but hopefully helpful.